Welcome to this informal service from the churches of St Mary's, Chalcombe and St Stephen's Lansdowne here in Bath, England. My name is Andrew Avramenko and I'm a curate and priest for those communities and beyond. And it's my delight to be able to connect with you through the power and blessing of technology that breaks down barriers and borders. Often we record our online services within either St Mary's or St Stephen's churches, but I'm speaking to you today from my study at home so that we can share in an image of particular significance to this past week and to this service. The image to my right is a print of a painting called The Saints of Selma, a modern day icon by the American artist Kelly Lattimore. It is one of two prints of her work that normally face me as I sit here at my desk to work, worship, study and pray. Images which certainly inspire me and remind me of God's love and God's call to love and serve those in need of justice. We will be coming back to the Saints of Selma in today's sermon later. But first, let us take a moment of silence to light the candle that reminds us that God and the light of Christ is here with us now. Our first reading today comes from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, his first letter, and chapter 12 and verses 12 to 31. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though are many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptised into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were a hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honourable, we clothe with great honour, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honour to the inferior member, that there may be no discussion, no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honoured, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? but strive for the greater gifts 
and I will show you a still more excellent way. And our Gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke chapter 4 verses 14 to 21. Glory to you, O Lord. At the beginning of his Galilean ministry, Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He enrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed upon him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Lord, I pray that the words you have given me today to speak are the words you want me to say. I pray that the words that are heard are the words that you want to be heard. In the name of your Saviour, our Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It's been quite a week full of significant events but none of the ones that I've been led to for this sermon took place within Westminster. The week started with the birthday of one of my heroes, a Baptist minister born on the 15th of January 1929, who would have turned 97 if he hadn't been assassinated as he continued to push for civil rights in America. I am, of course, talking about Martin Luther King, a man of such significance that his home country of the United States of America have a national day of celebration of his life. A day where even the opponents of him, his message and his legacy, quote his words and wisdom. Also this week, beginning on Tuesday, saw a week of prayer for Christian unity begin. It's an annual reminder of Jesus' prayer for his disciples that they may be one so that the world may believe. Have a look at John chapter 17 verse 21 for more on that. It is an intentional organised call to prayer that's been ringing out for over a hundred years long before Martin Luther King walked across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama on, in 1965, with people from multiple denominations of the church. That's the moment that's captured in the painting beside me, the Saints of Selma. Martin Luther King is in the centre of the front row, with John Lewis and Rosa Parks to his right, and Coretta Scott King and Ralph Abernathy to his left and of course many others behind him. Normally it sits above and behind the screen that I'm talking to you through. Fifteen saints of Selma who inspire me every time I sit at my desk to work and write. And if you want to find out more about that march, you can do little better than watch Ava DuVernay's film Selma, the one to my left. It's very good. The walk to Selma and the call to pray for Christian unity may have taken place last century, but both took place thousands of years after Paul was inspired to write his letter to the churches in Corinth, 
They included the passage we heard a moment ago. And it's a passage that points to the need and blessing of both. When Paul was speaking of one body and many members, he wasn't bringing up a new metaphor or concept. It was one that was very familiar to the people of Corinth and the Greco-Roman world. The Roman Empire itself was not alone in being spoken of as a body, with in its, its case the emperor as its head and with each of its citizens having a part to play within it. What was unique in what Paul was saying, however, was in how the body worked with and treated its component parts, a way that which was not anchored in the world, whether the Roman view of it or another, but it was anchored in Christ. And the need for his letter, and indeed the section of it that we heard, was because parts of the church in Corinth were rooting their behaviour not in Christ, but in the ways of the world, and unhealthy ones at that. Some in the Corinthian churches were boasting of their superiority and elevated importance in the church. That might have been acceptable within military or commercial um, identities elsewhere in society, but Paul knew that it wasn't right within the church a body which purported to understand and agree that all were made in the God's image and all were equal within the eyes of God, whether Jew or Gentile. And Paul used the body metaphor to illustrate that. To paraphrase Paul, if we single out a part of the body, if we try and rank parts according to their importance, we miss the beauty, blessing and necessity of each part working individually and with the others. Paul wanted to remind them that though some parts of the body are more noticeable than the others, they're no more indispensable than the others, and that includes church leaders. I am under no illusion that because I lead us through worship and have your attention now, that I am more significant than you. I certainly am not. What I am is an example of what Paul spoke of, just one particular part of the body that is the church. Those of us who are ordained are only ordained because the church, both in in which they worship and beyond, recognise that the Holy Spirit is wanting their particular set of gifts to be used in leading worship and churches. That same Holy Spirit is at work in all of us, and that same discernment should be too, in order to see how we should serve one another and God. And that doesn't necessarily mean we all have to have a skill or desire to do something. It may be that we recognise a need and are prepared to step up to meet it. Take for example, supporting and leading children and teenagers in their worship, or in inviting them to simply worship, witness, to simply witness and enjoy the love of God reflected in our love of them. The pandemic has hit us hard, and I'm not trying to rank impacts here, but the impact on children has made fundamental and dramatic impacts and changes that threaten not only their generation, but generations who will follow them. Some children started school this academic year, having spent almost half of their life within the pandemic, much of it isolated from other children. And I know from my time, the time I spent up at Abba Alfage Primary School in Lansdowne, that the pandemic has significantly hampered the development of their reading, writing, speaking and socialising skills. And the teachers there are doing a great job in helping the children catch up to where they normally would have been and then exceed. For those coming to the parent and toddler group in St Stephen's on Mondays, it's even worse. When that began in September last year, Some had not socialised or or learnt with anyone outside of their family for their entire life. So it's no surprise that this part of the body of Christ is struggling, struggling to connect with people, struggling to connect with their creator God. 
Paul knew that damage would be caused by the relative few in the Corinthian churches who thought too highly of themselves and who and those who let them get away with their pretentious posturing. Paul also knew that it didn't such actions, such behaviour didn't reflect God's love or intention that all parts of the body of Christ would seek to help those parts of the body that were in need. So I have a little challenge for you, perhaps it's a big one. Are you being called or can you feel the need to support and enable children to engage with God each week? It's not children's work, it's loving children, loving children like Jesus loves them. It's building up the body of Christ, keeping it healthy with new growth. Or do you see another need? If you do, that may be God prompting you to meet that need. As Paul said, it's important that we recognise the health of the whole body and that those who can support those who can't or who need help. Whilst the leaders of the Corinth churches may have thought they could do everything of importance, I certainly know that I can't, and I need to look no further than our weekly services in St Mary's and St Stephen's. If I was to name all the people who have done something within both churches to enable the weekly service of worship, we would be here quite a while. It would take even longer if I was to include those who run missions and groups connected with the churches. I would take even longer again if I was to name each and every one, each and every member of those churches who without fanfare or notice reflect and share their faith in Jesus through their words and deeds each day, including you. And that is part of being a follower of Christ, of being in the family of Christ, of belonging to the community of Christ. And all that is essential if we are to care for the body of Christ and show that the body of Christ, his church, cares about those outside of it. And that brings us back to the week of prayer for Christian unity and Martin Luther King. Paul was directing his letter to the churches in Corinth, but he wasn't limiting his message to them. Such was the social media of his day, making copies of letters to physically take to different places and people. Paul was opening his message up for the wider church, the church that was and is and is to come. So just as we need to care for the body that is an individual church, we also need to care for the body that is the church as a whole. And this week of prayer for Christian unity is an important step in caring for both. Disunity damages the body. And if unchecked and then unattended, causes divisions from which it is difficult to heal. Divisions which we have seen form numerous breaks in the body of the church, whose formation we can read about in the Bible. Have a look at Book of Acts if you can, my favourite book of the Bible. And as much as we may hope differently, unity with other Christians may not reform multiple denominations back into one, but seeking and achieving unity with a larger body of Christians does bring about healing and blessings. And the march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge is one such example. Martin Luther King was the figurehead of that march into the town of Selma, Alabama, but he did not march alone. A Baptist minister, he marched with a civil rights movement of 600 people similarly committed to non-violent protests. That movement that march included members of the Protestant, Roman Catholic and Orthodox denominations and also from Judaism. He marched with the body of Christ because members of that body saw and felt the pain that the African American churches were and people were suffering. That part of the body had resources, 
the part of the body that had resources to help the body part of the body in need of being resourced the part of the body that was able to worship sought to help the part of the body that was being persecuted by doing so by unifying denominations in order to march across that bridge they not only personified one body many people that paul spoke of they reflected the love of jesus for all people and they made an impact that brought about change which might never have come about had they remained remained divided or apart in this week of prayer for christian unity may we each pray discern and do all that we need to be unified in the church may we each play our part in caring for the body of christ in the church and may we reflect the love of christ to those within the body and those who could be amen Our prayers of intercession today have been prepared for us and for this week of prayer for Christian unity by the Middle East Council of Churches, part of the World Council of Churches, a global body bringing together all denominations in dialogue and unity. And it's a wonderful sight to see if you ever get the chance to go to them to take part in their work, uh, as I was privileged to do. A couple of years ago in Bossy, just outside Geneva in Switzerland. These prayers will be being prayed across the world today. That in itself is enormously powerful. And so, with faith and with confidence, we come in prayer before God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's pray. The Magi came from the East to pay homage and offer special gifts from their cultures and their countries. We pray today for all Christian communities around the world in all their diversity of worship and tradition. Lord, we ask you to preserve these treasures particularly in areas of the world where the presence and survival of Christians is threatened by violence and oppression. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. The early years of the Lord's life were marked by violence and massacres at the orders of the despot Herod. We pray for children living in places of the world where violence continues and where its results are tangible. Strengthen, O oh Lord, the bonds of unity and mutual love among our churches and help us to cooperate with and witness to your holy name. Inspire us to work without ceasing in order to defend the oppressed and include the marginalised. Encourage us to stand together in the face of tyranny and oppressive regimes as we seek your kingdom among us. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. After the witness of and visit of the Magi, the Holy Family experienced migration through the wilderness and became refugees in the land of Egypt. We pray for all the refugees and uprooted people in this world. Equip us, Lord, to show hospitality to those driven from their homes and grant us the spirit of welcome to those looking for a safe haven. O oh Lord, Hear our prayer. The birth of Jesus was good news for all, gathering people from different nations and religions in the worship of the Holy Child. 
We pray for our efforts to seek harmony and dialogue with other religions. Lord, give us humility and patience to walk with others in, with respect on their journey. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. The Magi return to their home by a different way. We pray for our churches in this changing world. Lord, help us to find new and creative ways to follow you and to witness you so that the world may believe. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. When the Magi saw the Holy Child, they rejoiced with great joy. Heavenly Father, fix our eyes on him so that we do not lose our way. Unite us in the Lord Jesus, who is the way, the truth and the life, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And as we set time as our time comes to an end a blessing from the world council of churches go now and live as children of light for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness let us wake from sleep and christ will shine upon us Peace be to the whole community and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who have an undying love for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. God bless you and now and in the week ahead. Goodbye.